Hey Grace Point, welcome to our Christmas Eve service. So good to have you with us um, tonight and celebrating the birth of Jesus. And the birth of Jesus is something that just brings us back to that place of reminding us about the gift of Jesus, which brings peace and joy and hope. And that's so um, great this year, just in such a challenging year, to remind us of what we have in Jesus and to remind us about our focus. In this, our festival of hope and joy. And so tonight, we really want to focus in on the gift of Jesus and, uh, and celebrate him because we can. So we have a lot of great things in store for us tonight. Margaret, why don't you share with us some of those things that we're going to do tonight in our service? Well, tonight we're going to have um, Rob sharing some truths um, just about who Jesus is and uh, what he has brought into our world. We're going to have our worship team leading us in some carols. We've got some of our family just sharing stories of how Jesus has broken through um, into their lives and um, brought the realness and the tenderness of his presence to them in their everyday. So you're going to really be encouraged just by their stories tonight. And we also have Dave and Chris. They're going to lead us in a couple of beautiful carols um, just as items, just to help you reflect and point you towards Jesus and uh, the goodness that he has poured out on us. So we are really excited about tonight. It's different. We've never been able, well, we probably have been able to do this, but um, this year, because of uh, the situation that we found ourselves in, we've tried to play with what we could bring this year as um, an offering at Christmas time, and we decided to do a Christmas Eve service. So we hope that you really enjoy it. We hope that you get your family involved and that it's just a great time for you all to reflect, to be together, um, and to, just to enjoy our church family at this time. So. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. The stories are awesome and we um, decided we don't want to be victims of this year. We actually want to live as empowered believers of Jesus and so we want to celebrate that tonight. We've got some great things in store. Keep watching with us. Yeah, the whole idea of the seven truths that we're going to share tonight in between our carols and stories kind of came from that. The Anglicans celebrate nine lessons of Christmas. And so we kind of took that idea and came up with seven timeless truths connected to the gospel message. So in between our stories and our carols and, and the other items that we're doing tonight, I'm going to read to you a truth and then a Bible verse or a, a, verse, a scripture verse from God's word that goes with that. So our first truth tonight is this. God, the creator, is love. He loves everyone without conditions because he is love. He created us in his image and in his likeness. And you and I, because of that, have immense value because of God's great love for us. In the Gospel of John in chapter 3 and verses 16 and 17, it says, For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent his Son into the world not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. You know, God has a wonderful way of turning our mess into a powerful message. Yeah, as you already know, Ross and I are involved in um, the ministry called Magnificence in Marriage. It's uh, founded by Graham and Angie Murphy, who is really a wonderful couple. Um, they are so wonderful and that uh, they are ministering already to 20, for 20 years, I believe, that they are ministering to, um, to marriages. And um, our mission is to help marriages to encounter God and to be led by grace, by His grace, to a magnificent uh, marriage. And uh, yeah, we started, actually we did not plan to be involved in this ministry. We attended our first marriage, encount marriage uh, Magnificent in Marriage Retreat in the Southern Highland about 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago. It was a wonderful time. And uh, we learned a lot. And then uh, afterwards we, uh, I, I have, I have um, a person that was um, working for me. Uh, and um, uh, on different occasions we, we had a talk and uh, he, um, he intimated with me that his marriage is not doing good and they are in the brink of divorce. I felt the tug in my heart to actually invite them, invite them to, the, to our house. 
So we invited them one time and um, we ministered to them. And that's the start of about a year, a year and a half of ministering to this couple. And the last time, the last thing that we did is we went to a retreat in, um, in Central Coast. And it was a very powerful um, time with the Lord. Um, and during the time when we were coming back from, from Central Coast to Sydney, I remember that song that there's no turning back. You know, and that probably I shared to, to them that song. And it's probably sealed what happened in that. So since then, um, there's no more vocabulary. In their vocabulary, there's no more of this divorce. And they, um, they are still together until now, you know. And um, this couple was ministering to about 28 cynicals in a Catholic, in a Catholic uh, community. But they were burned out. And we praise the Lord because we help them. And since then, we minister to about, um, about we, I think we did about 15, 15 Magnificence in Marriage retreats to the Catholic community. Actually, in 2020, we had two, one before the pandemic and the other one last September. We also did um, Magnificence in Marriage in the Philippines. We exported it and uh, we had five. Today we are changing a little bit of our tact uh, because of the um, magnificent, uh, of the um, COVID-19. <laughs> so we are doing our, our website and we would like to do this most probably online if COVID-19 will not stop um, in, the, in the near future. You know, God has a wonderful way of turning our mess into a powerful message and I think I go with that I think in 2021 although we had a lot of mess or misses in our life God can turn it around and it's not an excuse it could be a great or a powerful message to everyone thank you Baby boy is Lord of all creation.
salvation. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nations? Did you know? Thanks, Nick and team, for awesome worship through Carol, through a Carol Christmas Carol, and thanks, Mario, for that amazing story. Our second truth tonight is this. Our past ancestors mistrusted God's love and trusted in their own judgment instead of God's love for them. Their cho that choice of rebellion or sin, as we know it, made them orphans because it broke the perfect relationship that mankind had with God. We inherited this orphan mindset and because of this, we now search for self-worth, fulfillment and security in other places away from God because we feel he's distant to us. In Colossians chapter 1 and verse 21, it says, Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds. We're going to hear another great story from one of our church family rows right now. So stay tuned for that. We really cannot outgive God, you know. We can only channel our blessings. Well, 2020 is really a different year, you know, in so many ways. Uh, we got, we met so many challenges. Uh, we have so many changes, but there is only one constant, and that is the faithfulness and the goodness of the Lord. Okay. So the goodness of the Lord and His faithfulness is the one that really sustained and enabled us, you know? So I think I have given this testimony partly in May, you know? It's just because we are so amazed with the Lord's uh, goodness and His provisions. Because during the time in May, in March, we finished our mortgage, you know? So we're so, so happy. And then the following month of April, my salary was cut by 50%. <laughs> but funny thing is, we are still happy. And we are still so grateful to the Lord for that 50%. <laughs> Okay, yeah. So, um, because of this extreme situation, extreme uh, quarantine that's happening, okay, the churches, everyone is affected, okay, and country, churches, families are really uh, affected. Okay, and there's no difference with, uh, especially in the third world country like Philippines, right? So extreme quarantine, churches are closed. And the thing is, they don't have the options that we have here in Australia. Though our churches is closed, yet we can give our offering, tithes and offering via online. Okay, we have tightly. They don't have that option. And so, during that time, the Lord had really impressed on our hearts, you know, to send some funds, okay? And so, that was April, when we sent uh, our funds to 81 pastors, okay? And then I remember Mario shared it to the church, and Grace Point was so... Uh, generous to help us as well during that time and some other uh, grace pointers who also help out and so we send another uh, money okay to 104 new sets of 104 pastors okay so all of these are really really so you know amazing that 
we recall and we are so excited with, with this because it's the Lord who provided everything. He did it all. He provided it. It's because, see, see that um, a prior, six months prior to 2020, that's July in 2019, when the Lord engineered, you know, Mario offered, uh, Mario was offered with a job that he did not even apply. No CB was, you know, uh, given first. CB was given later. <laughs> and then the remuneration was outstanding. And it's, oh my goodness, Lord, you are really so good. You know, so he gave that. We had a small company, RMP, but it's not doing good, right? But the thing is, uh, during the pandemic, the sales increase, you know? And then another thing that we know that it's the Lord who is engineering all this is because even in myself, I was, you know, he gave me another source of income, an extra one, because I was offered overtime because we have to meet the deadline from the Ministry of Health. So much work to do. So from February, from April to July, I had this overtime. And see how the goodness of the Lord is. Because He knows, and it reminds me of the events of Joseph, you know? When Joseph was sold to the Egyptian as a slave, it was meant probably evil by the, his brothers, but it was meant by, uh, for God, it was meant for good because the famine, the family, his family was spared from famine. Okay, so he supplied. The provisions was, was given. And that's exactly that we are sensing here from the Lord, that the Lord have provided all this, okay, prior to pandemic so that when this time comes, we finish our mortgage, here comes, we have that capability to help out, you know, and to channel the blessings of the Lord. And so really, really amazing. We really cannot outgive God, you know. We can only channel our blessings. And that's why all praise and glory to Him alone. Yay, God! <laughs> Thank you, Father.
tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in the lonely manger, the humble Christ was born. And God sent our salvation. That blessed Christmas morning. Carols are great, aren't they? I love singing Christmas carols this time of year. There's so much truth in them. And our third truth tonight is, but God's love is for us. It's not against us. He is not angry with us and he is near us and wants us to come home. His choice is to bless us. And in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 22, it says, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. We're going to hear another story now, uh, another great story of God's amazing intervention in our life. Uh, so last year um, in November, Dwayne and I um, had to make a really tough decision to move out of the place that we were in, uh, just because the rent was too high and, and we just, just couldn't cope staying there. Um, this was really, really difficult for our family because we, we were so used to living in Matraville and um, the kids had a routine. Um, but at the same time, my dad was going on holiday to South Africa for three months and he's like, oh, well, my place in Campbelltown's there and I have to pay the rent anyway. So you may as well, you know, stay there for the time, um, which we did. And that was just such an amazing blessing because whilst we were over there, we didn't have to pay any rent which was great. It was really, really difficult because um, we had to, you know, come to and from work and, and the kids found it very difficult. Um, but it, it was fine. And in February, we moved into a place in Botany, um, a place we could afford. And it was just God's provision. And that was really, really awesome. Um, and then COVID happened and because I do pastoral care at Anglicare and I worked across two different homes, um, every time someone had the sniffles, either me or the kids, I had to self-isolate for 14 days early on in the piece that was the directive. So I did that a few times and that was really, really frustrating because my heart was just, I want to be at work, I want to be there to love on the residents that weren't seeing their families. Um, and that was very challenging. Um, there was a little bit of loss of income, but it wasn't half as bad as many other people. So God was so good. Um, in our, my last little stint of isolation, I had the honour to do pastoral care remotely for the Newmarch staff. Um, after the outbreak happened there um, and that was such a blessing and um, even though I couldn't physically be there it felt like I was sort of still doing something which was really great um, and then going back to work we continually had d different directives uh, we could work in two different homes we couldn't so it was you know and my boss suggested oh maybe it's time I should you know work at Taran Point full-time as I only did one day at Malabar uh, but I just felt like I wasn't ready and I felt very conflicted because I had all these residents that I had a long standing history with and, and also the staff, it felt like home. And then I said, no, 
I can't. I had the Malabar chaplain going, no, 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 don't go. And I had the Tarrant Point chaplain going, yes, come, come off full time. So yeah, it was really, really difficult and I just had to pray on it. And um, I think my heartstring was one resident. She had just turned 101 um, and she was my constant and I was her constant and she died. And after that, I just felt, I'm ready. Okay, Lord, I'll, I'll go over to Taran Point full time, which I did. Um, and everyone was like, oh, yay, you're here full time and really, really positive. And I felt so blessed by all, you know, all the excitement of me being over there full time. And I started having these really creative ideas on things to do. And um, one, and I'm like, oh, where's all this coming from? And one of the ideas were, um, I was just going through notes of different residents and in the day we have something um, called Rhythm of Life where, you know, uh, real, uh, residents have choice to do what they want to do, when they want to do it and we have all these programs in the day but come 4.30 all of that stops and it becomes like institutionalized almost you know there's not a lot going on and um, especially overnight where they get redirected to go back to bed and normally especially people with dementia they don't have um, any idea what time of day it is and lots of falls and things happen because that's the directive go back to bed go back to bed and I said to the chaplain oh what about if we do a night shift and he's like oh that would be a great idea and um, the reason I thought that would be good is because sometimes at night that's when residents are really feeling the loneliest and afraid and very confused and we went to the residential care manager and said oh you know let's do this and he goes oh yeah you, you you'll be surprised how many people are awake and I'm like yeah we're not surprised so we've done um, five night shifts in the last few months and we've just found that staff um, just really appreciate us being there residents are engaged um, and We've actually put a report together that we will present in the new year to chaplains and pastoral carers and yeah, people that I've never met that will um, see that. So that's really, really exciting. Um, and on the home front, um, Dwayne and I, we just, we've just been saying, oh Lord, we just want to go back to Matraville. We just want to go back to Matraville. And, but we need, you know, the rent to be good. And one Saturday morning we woke up and we're like, oh, there's this place. Let's just go and have a look. And we went and we put an application in. And Monday morning before our references were even called, they said, oh, your application's been approved. Um, and we're like, yay. And then our landlord at the time sort of gave them bad feedback and then they're like, oh, we, we can't take you guys, you know, just various reasons. Um, but somehow, by the grace of God, all of that just got turned around and within 24 hours we got reapproved. and it's like, yay God, that's awesome. Um, so yeah, 2020 has been really, really difficult. Um, God has really um, blessed me and favored me in so many areas um, and I think the biggest surprise, and I shouldn't be surprised, is um, in the last few months we've just gotten gifts of financial blessing just almost every week. Um, even today someone gave me some money and I'm like, oh, that's so awesome. Um, so yeah, God's been so, so faithful and I feel so blessed and yeah, yeah God.
Thanks, Fiona. What a great story of God's provision. And thanks, Dave and Chris, for that awesome item. What a, just a great opportunity just to meditate on one of the awesome carols of Christmas. Our fourth truth is that the prophets foretold of a coming saviour. His name is Jesus. Jesus is the Son of God, and he demonstrated the full extent of God's love when he took our sinful, independent, broken human nature in himself when he sacrificed his life for ours. Three days later, God raised him to life, and Jesus now lives with the Father forever in victory over the devil, over sin, over guilt, over shame, and over death. This is certainly the good news of great joy for all people. The Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 18 to 19 puts it this way. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. We're going to hear another wonderful story of God's provision as Anna shares that with us now. It's been a humbling experience this year watching God move both last year and this year. I remember back in um, November last year, just before um, I went on my holiday to um, LA, the day before we had our house on the market. Um, it was supposed to go for open home and the house sold just the day before um, I just, I'm just amazed at how God moves. Um, he's just, he provides. He's just um, such an um, awesome God. His hand just works and it's so much favour. It's um, according to his season. So um, as I went on holiday, um, I had the dilemma of coming back to having to move and um, I having to find a rental property within three weeks because I had booked tickets to go to New Zealand. Now, um, the, the day I landed, there was already a rental property that I was scheduled to see. And as I went to see the rental property um, with my sons, um, the agent actually um, yeah, let me know that there were two other applicants that had already put their um, applications in. Um, and as I finished looking at it, he said to me, would you like the property? And I was in awe because I, I didn't have any reference checks. Um, and I knew there was all two other applicants in there so once again God had just moved for that provision to give to me and the boys a place to live um, I was just you know um, dumbfounded at how amazing God just um, yeah open um, yeah level the the mountains for me and and the boys and provided for us um, so we lived at um, our unit in Botany for a couple of months until February this year and I had the sense and I wanted to find a home for me and the boys because um, that was always my, um, yeah, what I had wanted. Um, we weren't quite settled living in a unit. So um, come February I started looking for places to um, buy but um, COVID had just hit and um, like the week before we had looked at a unit that um, as soon as I walked in I knew that um, it was the one that I fell in love with, it ticked all the boxes, it had um, amazing lighting, it was open plan, um, it had a bathroom, um, it had three bathrooms and um, yeah it, had, it was big enough for me and the boys to live in it so it ticked all the plans and it was in Botany, the places, place that I wanted to stay because it was walking distance um, to church uh, but I couldn't afford it, it was at, way out of my budget. We waited, um, I was um, blessed to have um, a buy agent through my brother that was helping me looking at units. So we waited um, and we looked at units, I looked at many but none of them can, could compare to the one that I had seen. Um, and five m months later down the track, um, yeah, God once again provided, um, the price dropped to the price that I had actually said that I could only reach and um, yeah, I was... Um, yeah, I was, um, yeah, I, I was actually in, in tears knowing what a mighty God, you know, and how much blessing um, he actually poured out on me and the boys. Um, so moving into the unit was like a safe haven for both of us. It um, ticked all the boxes. They had their own room and it was just big enough for us. It was, it was beautiful. Um, so uh, it's just, yeah, once again, uh, you know, when God moves, he moves. He just levels the planes for us. And um, 
just so humbled at how you know how he moves. Um, also, last year I started um, taking um, diversing in my creativity, and I was able to do um, um, take up a new technique called um, acrylic pouring, where you actually put different paints in cups and you actually pour onto the canvas. And each time that you do it, you can't repeat the pattern because the paints and um, how you actually tilt and different methods that you apply it creates a different um, effect and um, interaction with the paint. So every paint I was creating, every pour I was creating was was a new um, piece of artwork. None two was alike. So um, I just, you know, it was a time for me and God just to create art. And um, during this time. Um, yeah, God just moves through quite a few prophetic pieces that I was producing and um, I was just amazed that when I poured and when the paint had finally settled that um, yeah, there were messages in there and I was um, blessed to be able to give pieces to um, yeah, quite a few people and just to share um, yeah, God's blessings through me to, to other people. So it's been amazing um, a year that God has you know, so graciously blessed me and the boys and um, yeah, he's just um, poured out his love and um, so much favour and just, you know, his timing's been perfect. Yeah, so blessed. Thanks, Dick and team. I hear you guys are doing a great job. Sorry, I just couldn't help my elf. Had to just put on the hat 
and add to the spirit of the night. Our our fifth truth is now everyone, no matter of race, gender, age or history, can come back into relationship with God the Father through what Jesus has done for us. God's giving everyone, no matter who you are, what you've done or where you've been, an invitation to come home. You matter to God. He loves you and he wants to accept you and he will accept you like no other. In Colossians chapter 1 and verse 22, the Apostle Paul says, But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. Sarah's got a great story about reconciliation. We're going to hear from her right now. Okay, so in March of this year, um, just before lockdown, like about a week or two before lockdown, I uh, had been reading at night uh, in Mark 11. I read one night the verses about Jesus um, and the fig tree, and he cursed the fig tree and it withered and, and so forth. And you sort of, when you've read those verses a lot, you don't really think of them um, much. You're sort of like, oh, yes, I know this. Anyway, the next morning I had to go to the post office and I was at work and uh, I work on uh, UNSW campus. And so I went to the post office there and walked past the library lawn where there were some stalls set up by students. And there was one saying free baklava, which was, you know, took me in. And I went over and there was some Islamic literature on the table and I got quite excited about that because I love talking to Muslims. And I spoke to this young man and um, told him I was a believing, practicing Christian. And he said, "Um, I have a question about Jesus. He said, there's a story in the Bible about Jesus cursing a fig tree. And I'm like, oh Lord, you set me up. (laughs) And I got really excited. And his question was, he said, now if Jesus was really God, wouldn't he have known that the fig tree had no fruit? And so I said to him, we probably did. And I sort of explained how Jesus used to teach, you know, um, his disciples and how he communicated with, with the people of that day in parables and Sometimes he did demonstrations like the fig tree. And um, I then took out my Bible app and I said, he did that as a point. He wanted to make a point. And then he talked to his disciples about prayer. And I read the verses to him about prayer. And he, and how if you have, you know, you pray and believe you received it, you get it. Um, And he was really touched by that. And he said... He was like, oh, that's really nice. Um, And so I had to leave, unfortunately. I couldn't stop and talk to him more. But I really believe with all my heart that when God sets you up for something like that, and and we were about to go, we didn't know we were about to go into lockdown, but I really believe that that God knew that this young man needed to hear something. Um, And as I was walking back down, I thought, you know, those verses in Isaiah 55 that say, Uh, So is the word that goes forth from my mouth. It does not return to me empty, but it accomplishes accomplishes my desire, what I desire and and achieves, you know, the purpose for which I sent it. And I believe that very much that that's what happened with that young man. And um, that got me very excited. But another thing that happened also during COVID, so we went into lockdown and teaching from home. And I, I discovered very quickly that I couldn't teach from home so I had to go into the office and um, after a couple of weeks another colleague of mine started coming in as well and it turned out that the two of us were there all year together Um, and he's gay and I uh, didn't know him all that well at that point but we got to know each other very well Um, it was uh, we had a lot of fun and a lot of very interesting conversations because again he knew I was a Christian and I would say things and he'd respond and we we had some interesting conversations. But I also was saddened to hear that he has had some very, some horrible things said to him by Christians in the past. And I, I think the, the conversation that really I remember is when I, I said to him, you know, God loves, the God that I believe in loves you and your partner fiercely and your lives matter to him and he was he was really touched by that and and said thank you 
but there are six of us Christians at work and I was I'm in a prayer group on Thursday mornings on Zoom and I was every now and again I'd mention my conversations with this colleague and one of the other Christians in the group got very excited because um, another gay colleague also in our department was going to her house to teach as well so he um, and she had a, again a lot of really interesting conversations about Christianity and God and I thought you know if we were in the workplace that wouldn't happen because you've got lots of people around you're busy people talk about work you don't have a lot of privacy um, so COVID provided the way for two of our colleagues um, to hear the word of God and to hear and to watch us actually as well to watch how we respond to things and and so forth. So I just think this year has been awesome and that God has really um, set up some fantastic situations at least for me and, and my other colleague. Yeah. So, amen. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah, for those amazing stories, and thanks, Nick, and the team again for another great carol. Truth number six is this. The Father's invitation is to trust him and believe in him. He's inviting you and me to believe and act on what he's done for us through Jesus. The Father wants to make things new again. 
He's about forgiveness and his priority is love and he wants you as part of his family. You and I belong there with him. In Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13, it says, For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son, who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. We're going to hear from some of our newest members of Grace Point family this year, Sam and Courtney. And they've got a great story of how God has looked after them throughout this year. So, um, for us, we have seen throughout 2020 and experienced just God's faithfulness um, in times of uncertainty and um, definitely had his provision kind of all throughout the year in times where we weren't too sure where it was going to come from or, or how um, he was going to provide. Um, so we started off the year having just left our previous church and we weren't too sure where we were headed. Um, we knew that we wanted to be involved in ministry some way, somehow. We knew that we wanted a new church to call home. We knew that um, I especially wanted to be involved in working with um, most likely youth and young adults ministry, uh, but we just weren't sure where that was going to come from or, or where we were headed. Um, so we started off with a bit of an uncertain year. Um, and then like the rest of us um, around March the whole world got flipped upside down and it got even more uncertain. Um, Courtney was stood down from her work, um, I lost the part-time work that I was doing in some landscaping and we were kind of sitting there without um, both of us being unemployed, not knowing what direction we were heading. Um, thankfully um, through JobKeeper Courtney was able to get back onto work but we were um, obviously financially stretched, um, yeah financially stretched and um, so yeah, kind of sitting there being like, we're not really not too sure where we're going. But the cool part of it was that in all of that, um, as much as there was um, a lot of reasons for us to probably be a little worried and, and anxious, um, and I'd be lying if I said there was never any moments of that, but um, as a whole, we really did just have a peace um, uh, throughout it all. We had a, um, a really cool peace from God that um, he hadn't left us, that he hadn't flipped, he hadn't changed, that he was still steady and good. Um, I had a really cool sense from him and, and kind of heard him speak really clearly to me that I didn't need to go searching for work, that I didn't need to go striving for anything, um, that this could be a season of just sitting and trusting in him and waiting, um, which at times, as I'm sure we can all be aware, is frustrating, but <laughs> it's also um, kind of the best thing in the world when you have that freedom to live in, which we, we were trying our best to do. And we just tried our best to be as faithful as um, we could be with our finances, with our time, with how we worshipped him in that. Um, and then he's good and he provides and halfway through the year we got a message from, from Rob and Marguerite asking if we wanted to catch up um, and one thing led to the other and we've been, then headed, started to head across to the eastern suburbs and have found ourselves calling Grace Point home, um, have found ourselves finding a new apartment in Maroubra um, and it's just really cool to, to look where we were at the start of the year um, and the uncertainty we were living in to um, to now where we are um, and it's just so obvious seeing how God's moved, seeing his um, fingerprints all throughout different points in the year. Yeah, it was so cool to see how many times he surprised us just with his love and he, yeah, there was always a sense that we were never alone, that he knew us, he cared for us uh, and he saw us in, in all those moments. Um, and a really cool thing that um, friends of ours and we kept having yeah, friends speak it over um, and we felt the Lord was saying something about new life, new um, yeah, just that sense of new. And a, a friend spoke this verse over us that just really um, spoke to my heart um, from Isaiah 43. And the Lord says, Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth, do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And it's just incredible that we feel like he has fulfilled that promise of new in Grace Point and we feel refreshed and we feel revitalized and yeah we're just so excited to to step into this new season um, and yeah it's just been amazing to see how his his promises and, and faithfulness has been fulfilled for us. Okay so I've always I've always been in awe of God's financial provision for me and my family over the years it's I've always been completely mind blown about it um, and this year has been no exception. Um, so I've never really actually liked my job. I've always just seen it as a ministry to keep myself sane with it. And I love the students. Um, so that part of it has been wonderful. But over the years, I've looked for other jobs. I've tried to leave and I've never felt God releasing me. And um, 
you know, every year I say, please don't make me come back next year. And the next year starts and I'm there. So uh, this year was hideous, as it probably has been for so many people. Uh, teaching online and the stress and um, extra workload and all of that. And this year I have been begging God to please let me go. Please don't make me come back next year. Um, but in my mind I've been thinking, but I don't know how I would work that. I'm not quite at retirement age yet. Um, so, you know, there's all these other things I'd have to think about. and But I've still been praying, you know, please, please don't make me come back next year. And I was looking in my spiritual journal and in August I said, I wrote, I want to know what season I'm in and what to prepare for. And then in September, um, Rob told us about The Last Arrow, a book that he was reading by Erwin McManus. And uh, I just, awesome book, you have to read it. I've got almost every page um, highlighted. Um, And in that book, he writes, if you are not where you want to be, why do you keep choosing to stay where you are? If you know there is a future waiting for you, why do you choose to stay trapped in the past? And that was really on my heart that month. And I just was putting it out there to to the Lord. You know, I don't know how to leave um, financially. I don't quite know. I'm not quite there yet. Um, But not long after that, in fact, in September, we got told of um, the the university was offering voluntary redundancies. And the moment I heard that, I was like, yes, because, and I took it and I actually felt uh, a lot of peace. I, I, I barely prayed about it actually, but I, but I felt peaceful about it and I still do. Um, I think it is the right time. I really believe it's the right time. And the thing about a voluntary redundancy is I've got the time to figure myself out and to look for something else if I want something else. So God has provided yet again another way um, to move into the next stage of my life without having to worry or or stress, even though I know I shouldn't worry or stress anyway. Um, But yeah, thank you, Father. Amen. brightly shining it is the night of our dear Savior's birth long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt his worth
Thanks, Sam and Courtney and Sarah, for those stories of God's provision, God looking after us in this year. Such great stories to hear about what God has been doing throughout this year. Our last truth this evening, truth number seven, is this, that God is a God who transforms. He can turn the impossible into possible. He can change the unlovely to lovely, the natural into the supernatural. Because he is a transforming God, if his love is with us and we believe in him, then as part of his family, we become people who can also transform the earth with the same love, the same power, and the same truth that Jesus showed. In Luke chapter 1, verse 37, part of the Christmas story is this phrase. It says, For nothing is impossible with God. Well, we're going to hear another item from Chris and Dave about <clears throat> Mary, did you know? And you might want to take time to Google the words of that and just reflect on that, the verse of that, the impact of what, what Jesus' birth did and how it transformed this world, how it transforms people every day. That's it, Grace Point. That's our Christmas Eve service tonight. Uh, first one in, uh, I think it's our first one ever at Grace Point that I can remember. I hope that you've enjoyed the stories, the amazing stories of God's provision and transformation. I hope you've enjoyed the carols and reflecting on the truth that's, that's in those and, and the, the opportunity to use carols to worship God. And I hope you enjoyed Chris and Dave's um, items just to help us reflect that a little bit more. Those truths are something that are profound. They talk about who Jesus is. They talk about why he came. They talk about what he's doing and they talk about what he's yet to do. For me, this year's still been a great year. 
I know we've had our challenges and I'm not saying it hasn't been tough and I'm not saying I haven't had my moments or, or those times where I've really questioned things or been frustrated or, or found myself in moments of, you know, kind of depression or struggling here and there. But right from the get-go of this year when COVID hit and the fires and the floods, I decided that this was still my best year yet. I decided that I wanted to believe that God was still who he said he was. I chose not to be a victim and I chose to upgrade my beliefs in this year and place my beliefs in Jesus who really is the saviour. I decided that I wanted the rubber of the road of my faith to hit the road running all through the year and to really show up in those times of challenge and question so that I could really experience Jesus' peace, really experience Jesus' hope and really experience Jesus' joy because if the joy of the Lord is my strength, I needed strength this year. And I think I found that strength in different ways than I have before because I was really challenged with the circumstances around me and I really needed strength, so I really pressed in to find God's joy even in the midst of COVID. That's one thing that I got out of this year. And I just encourage you, take time before this year finishes to reflect on the things that God has been speaking to you about. Find those places of his joy, of his hope and his peace. Find those places where he's upgraded your beliefs and imparted to you things of his blessing, things of his nature, things of his spirit, so that we are better for that and can go into 2021 with momentum and looking forward to the year and the years that are yet to be. We invite you to join us again tomorrow morning. Uh, we will be having another service online from 9am. But the beauty of this year is that you can tune in any time after 9am tomorrow morning to um, enjoy our Christmas Day service. So eat your lunch first, watch it while you're preparing lunch, watch it before dinner, watch it in the evening. Just choose some time during the day to gather as a family and um, come onto Facebook Live and watch and join in our service. It'll be great fun. Uh, we invite you to do that. We are grateful that you joined us tonight and we hope that you've had a really um, special time with your family and with your Grace Point family as we've celebrated Christmas Eve. We love you, Grace Point family, and we just pray and declare God's richest blessing of his hope, of his peace and his joy, and most of all, his love over you and your family and loved ones at this time and all throughout the rest of this year and into the new year. Bless you.